In this demo, we're going to take a look at the new Read Write Many support in CNS for vSphere. So what we've got here is a Kubernetes manifest that has multiple separate pods all mounting a single persistent volume in a read write fashion. So what we're going to do straight away is just kick off and deploy this application. So we'll do a kubectl apply dash f and then the application manifest itself. So that's kicked off. It's created a namespace, a persistent volume claim in read write many mode, um, an ingress route so that we can actually access the service and then three different pods, Frontail, John, and Hal. And they're all gonna mount this uh, singular volume in a read-write fashion. So Hal and John are going to write to the volume and Frontail is going to read from the volume. So let's check and see if our application is up. So we'll change into the Space Odyssey namespace and we'll do a watch on all of the resources, persistent volume claims, and the ingress routes. So we can see here that the containers are in a creating state. You can see that the persistent volume claim is bound at the minute. And if we jump into vSphere here and expand our recent tasks, we can see that it's going ahead and creating a vSAN file share on the back end automatically, uh, mounting it into those appropriate pods, and they'll be up and running now in a second. So if we have a look at our uh, label filters here and we refresh that, you can see that we've now got this new Space Odyssey app. So if we click on this to filter only the volumes that are being used by that application, you can see that there's one persistent volume claim here. If we drill into the details, you can see that this one persistent volume is being mounted by Frontail, Hal, and John. It's got the label Space Odyssey against it. And if we look at the basics, we can see that it's a file type volume, what the file share ID is, what data store it lives on, what storage policy it's being backed by, is it compliant with the storage policy? And if we wait a few more minutes, the health status of the file share will show up as well. So let's go and take a look at the vSAN file share on the back end that, that CNS has automatically created. So if we go into the configure menu and scroll down to the bottom, we'll see this file service share section. So if we go in here, we can see there is this container volume that was just created. This is the ID of the container volume, which matches what was in the UI, uh, what host that file share is currently being served from, as well as any limits or quotas that are applied to that file share as a result of the persistent volume claim from Kubernetes. So if we go into Visual Studio Code again, we can now see that all three pods are in a running state. And the ingress route is bluedanube.apps.satm.eng.vmware.com. So if we hit this URL in our browser, that will show us this application. So let's go and look at the application. So if we go new tab and we type in blue and hit enter. Okay, so we can see that these two pods are both simultaneously writing to this volume. One is writing open the pod bay doors and the other one is writing not this again. So if we go back in here, we can prove this out by going and deleting our HAL pod. And we'll just make sure that it is actually deleted. Okay, it's gone. So now we've just got John and Frontail actually mounting that. So if we go back and look at our application now, what we should be able to see is that Hal is no longer writing into this volume and all we see is John saying open the pod bay doors. Equally, because this is uh, CNS and because we have full lifecycle management of our container volumes, if we delete this Kubernetes manifest, it'll get rid of all of the pods and ingress routes and the persistent volume claims that, that made up that application itself. Obviously, we're going to get an error for Hal because that pod has already been deleted. Um, but if we go back into vSphere, we can see, if we refresh this, the app is gone because we've deleted the application. But not only that, that it's actually going to go and clean up that volume and make sure that it's deleted from vSAN file services as well, so that there are no orphaned volumes and no stray bits and pieces left behind. So if we give a refresh here, you can see that the volume is gone. We go back into our monitor tab and down to the container volume section. And we apply a label filter again. So we say label and we want to look at the app. And you can no longer see the Space Odyssey application label, which means it's all been cleaned up. So we've seen the full lifecycle of read write many volumes through CNS. 
It'll automatically create vSAN file services file shares, mount them into the appropriate containers and pods, and then whenever they're all deleted or it's all removed at the end, everything gets cleaned up behind. Thank you for taking the time to go through this quick feature overview for Read Write Many Volumes with CNS.